Hi everyone, Mary Nespresso Press Design. Thank you for joining me today for the second video in the um, playlist, Trash to Treasure. I've been playing around with this all week and I have some new things I discovered for you. And first, thank you so much for the response to this playlist. Thank you for the kind and constructive comments and uh, sharing what, you th what you've done similar in the past and things like that. But today, um, that's what we're going to do. And I've been playing around with it all week and these are the ones I came up with. I just chose uh, yellow and I combined embossing folders. I'm going to bring this up here hoping you can see it. So I put the text on the top and the floral on the bottom. I had a little uh, I thought I could go over the light text with ink and then it was a disaster so I put one of my homemade washies on there. Actually that's the second one. This was the first one. And you can probably see I combined stencil or embossing folders and I took the darks tear strips of magazines and framed that out and I have to say well okay this is where we it was last week with these ones and I have to say I'm not really a fan of the blacks unless I can find unless I can find black and white images or high contrast images so I thought I would try one with medium and I used two embossing folders. I'm going to show you how I layered those in a minute. Love this. Love the mosaic. So I took that a little further and came up with this one. Now I did use a cover a magazine cover for this blue and it was extremely difficult to remove the ink. I actually went up and got some of my homemade cleaner and used that on the blue. So I don't know, maybe they use a better quality ink on the covers. I don't, I can't explain the reason for that. So, but that's what I did and then I just chose another yellow and continued with the mosaic and the um, two different embossing folders. This one is a diagonal stripe. I don't know if that's going to show up because the colors are the uh, distressing is on light paper. So then I decided this was probably one of my favorite techniques in colors and on this one probably the purple, the lavender, is the hardest to remove the ink. And I don't think there's not enough contrast in this room for you to see the full effect of the um, distressing. So that's what we're going to do today, something similar. And I'll give you a recap of what you need. Let me just show you first how I layered these um, embossing folders. These are the only two I have on my table here for a reason. So I just, either I did 
one a part of the way like that and then went in again with the different folder like that but the thing is you have to maneuver it around to fit in your your machine so that's just something to keep in mind you're going to have to play around with the best way to get everything to fit in your machine so you'll need your embossing folders or you can use the handmade technique I did last week your embossing machine and I also want to show you this here is one where I kept it in the magazine and just didn't use anything but rubbing to try to, to distress a page. I want to show you how well that removed everything. Um, those, there was a couple of vacuum cleaners there in the corner, a logo, and it pretty much distressed them pretty well, I would say. I left it in the magazine so it wouldn't tear because I had to spray it so many times. So that's another thing to keep in mind. And that's about it. So as I said, I was using last week. Oh, you need your 50% alcohol and 50% water. Some glue. Your magazine images and a base. This is another um, size of the bases I used last week. I cut up old sketchbooks and uh, these are four and a quarter by five. So that's what I'll be using today. And then my image I chose another text and uh, have that glued on already. I have my embossing folders chosen. And then I'm going to show you. I'm going to keep that. That's the page it came from. So I'm going to keep that. Um, so I wanted to show you. If you wanted to tear, I have these images for my colors. That's for later. And I'm going to show you what I make to tear. Make a tear ruler. Hopefully this is dry. I have two pieces of packaging glued together. And I hope I'm going to be able to cut through here with my deco scissors. If not, I have another small one here I can use. Okay. Now they're stuck together. Ugh. Okay, so that's how I make a tear roller. If you want something like that to help you tear a little bit. And then I found that if you go something like this, if you want to keep it straight, if you keep this rolled edge very flat, you can get a consistent tear if you want to try that but I'm just going to go with the golds, the browns, the grays and get some little mosaic pieces here this was a lot of fun and I have more things to try. Someone asked if it would work on book pages. I do not know. Off the top of my head. 
I would say the ink quality is probably a lot better. So that's why I have my doubts about whether it would work. It might take more sprays. It might take more alcohol. I don't know. Or it might take something, something stronger. But nevertheless, you could still try it with another chemical and just use your embossing folder. I'm going to keep that. All is beautiful. Might add that somewhere on the back maybe. Okay, so I wanted some brown as well, so I better keep going. I wanted gray, brown, and gold, and there's a very dark gray on there I can use. So I'm going half and half, half medium tones and half dark. And I've been using um, my purple glue stick for this. There. Okay. So basically I just got some glue. Hopefully I'm not about to run out of glue stick. I discovered one thing. These I just bought a couple little ones to test this glue out for a while. And then I uh, realized how quickly they run out. So anyway, I decided that design was probably one of my favorites because it's the most graphic. The Vogue World one. And in the end, I kind of wish I would have put a strip there and covered that up. But by then it was too late. So I hope everyone's doing fine. I really think this playlist will be a lot of fun. It's one of the first things I found very intriguing about junk journals. Some of the people who were so talented in making things with junk. One of the ones that pops to my mind is Betty Calkins. I know there are others, but she she's one of those ones that um, just blew me away with the things she could come up with out of junk. So I found it very intriguing, despite I do like all things paper, so. So that's the thing, you're going to do with this what you will. You might not necessarily have want to make cards or whatever, but that's just one of the things I would probably use most often.
if you want to add this to something else and you don't want the emboss, I think you need a darker. Oh, I don't have that much dark gray anymore. You can use your, um, you can do this on book pages. Let me put in two there. And um, embo emboss and wipe off on book pages. And then if you wanted to glue it in a journal or make a pocket or some other thing other than a card. That's how you could do it, but I, I'm just, I want that next to each other, where's some brown, um, I just felt these bases would be strong enough to hold up to embossing and rubbing, that's why I chose that, but I did do it on a book page. something else about embossing folders. I'll show you in a moment. I want a little strip in there to break that up after I get this on. Let's go that way. And that. And that. Okay. Get a tiny strip. Of this it's gonna be light gray. I need a ruler for this. So I have a smaller one here. In the end I also use these for making my decal edge border. But you probably know that already. Let me, um, there we go. I'll just go like that. Whoops. Here's the end of that one. Where did I put those? Hopefully I don't have to get up and get more glue, but I might. Maybe not. Well, you're not going to go back in, that's for sure. Okay. Let me get these cut off. And then show you about the embossing folder. Scissors need cleaned off. I 
don't know if there were any other questions that I remember trying to answer here. Okay. Oh. Remember when I said I didn't like getting um, glue on my roller? <laughs> well, I've been getting glue on my roller ever since I did this. Is there a piece I missed, or is that just... Let's see if there's any left in here. Yeah, you got to really watch those lifted edges. Because once you soak those and start rubbing, they will come right up. Don't want to stick. There we go. Okay. Now my fingers are covered with glue, and I missed a spot where it peeled off. So. This glue is very creamy. Probably part of what helps it have staying power. It seems to be very good. I will say that. hope. Sorry, now I have glue all over my hands and it's not dry. <laughs> okay, that should be good. Oh geez, you're still coming up because I'm rolling you up. Extremely sticky. And it's stick in the machine. Okay, so while that's drying, one more minute. If you have, say you don't want your image to be embossed at all, I'm going to have to put it in this way. You can choose a folder. It's part blank. Like so. This is all flat. And just emboss a part of your image. That seemed to be the best way I found to come up with that. Overcoming that problem. If you don't want your entire image embossed. But I pretty much just didn't rub it, and so therefore I kept the image and just distressed this part. So today I'm just going to use the letters again and not combine because it's, I just have such a little area. I feel like that will probably come out, come out the best. And then I'm just going to get as much on here as possible as far as letters go. And they're going to be sideways. <clears throat> so I'm not going to get any words, I don't think. Maybe one or two. I'm going over here to uh, emboss. And then we'll begin rubbing it off. Mm -hmm. 
I'm going to hope this doesn't stick in here because of that one spot. Okay. It just pressed pretty much. Just a second here and I'll bring that up to you. That out of the way. So there it is embossed. So this part, get this out of the way. You need your alcohol, 50-50 alcohol and water, and a very soft cloth. Because you don't want to tear anything. I'm just going to go for the top and the bottom and leave the center undistressed and see how easily this, these particular magazines and pages work. I did find that usually by the third spray the ink was so dissolved that it just rubbed right off. Depending on the color, depending on the magazine. Like I said, using that blue cover, um, I had a really hard time removing that. Going to try to avoid getting this so soaked so I don't lift anything. But I know I'm going to have to spray that again, looks like. I think the black is coming off the easiest, or the dark gray. I don't know if the dark gold is going to show up or not. It might be too light. Kind of like that lavender. That's what I found. Every color is different. Every Magazine is different. <laughs> I think this magazine was good housekeeping. Okay, I'm going to need another spray. It's coming, but not that fast compared to some. Like that's not coming off at all yet. That dark brown is coming off nicely. Okay, I'm going to give it a pat. See, I have a little tear already. Give it a pat to let it dry before I spray it again. Okay. Let's hope that's number three. Oh, there we go. Here comes that heart.
gold, still not so much. This little spot of gold is okay. It's pretty distressed. Oh, here comes that little heart maybe on the gold. And the other thing I did when I, that's lifting. The other thing I did um, when I couldn't get an area up, I just sprayed my cloth so I could have a little more concentrated. The brown's doing great. The gray is doing pretty well. Could lift off a little on this first image where I have some black. Okay, I would say the black, the dark brown. Whoops, there's a tear. I don't want that. I'm going to cover that with ink. Okay. I think that's probably the best I'm going to get. Oh, that just almost came completely off that E. It's not bad. So I'd say the dark, dark brown, and then the gray, and last the gold. I can barely see the gold. So there you go, and it'll show up better in the photograph, which will be on the blog because there's not enough contrast in here. You bring that up as close as I can so you can see I mean there's just not enough contrast between the gold and the white so probably my blues and my oranges the blues and the oranges for some reason I got the better the better distress. But that's just the way it goes because it's all a um, it's all an experiment. But I still like it. I like those colors together. I kept that on the back in case I don't want to cover the back. So, just going to go here and show you a couple of things. Oh, I wanted to hide that with some gray ink. I'll hide that tear. And then I... <clears throat> Here's my little roller. <clears throat> this is still wet a little bit. So I, I just took some ink. And right now, for the sake of time, I'm just going to use a marker. So I cut off my deckle edge. And I meant to see if I could find a Sharpie. Black Sharpies dis around, disappear around here very fast. And then I just colored in my edge. I 
this black isn't a true black. It's looking dark gray. So I wanted to show you that. And let me show you the tape trick. I'll probably put it on the back. That's coming up. I'll brush over that with um, liquid glue. I might brush over the whole thing with liquid glue, actually. Uh, so if I needed a word, and I had to hide something, I would just find the word I wanted. Uh, let me see if I can find something gold. That's too big, but I would... Um, sorry, I was reading that. I would use something like that if it wasn't too big. reading quickly here. I would take that word, but then that's all I would have, so I'm trying to see. Okay, I'm going to take that just for sake of time. Ideas such as deep breath. <laughs> so I would just spray it. This is, um, what's her name? Pink Strawberries has her signature glitter strip. This is what I do anytime I want washi or award because I could just as easily pick up pattern. This is one of my funnest things ever. I got a wrinkle. Hopefully I'm going to get that entire word. Got it. So there we go. So that's how you can hide a mistake. And I'm going to put that on the back. Sometimes you have to re glue it. Looks like I have to re glue it. Sometimes it sticks on its own. Come on, I'm trying to get it lined up perfectly with the edge and it's sliding <laughs> when I put it down. Okay, and then I give it a rub, and this is the invisible tape, the one that, um, it's not the shiny, and that's what I use, so that's what I, that's what I do, you can see that purple showing through. That's what I do when I need to hide a mistake. So that's everything I came up with in week one of experimenting with this. And I have one more, at least. Possibly two. 
I'm going to move on to some different papers and see how it works on that. And I just want to give you a preview of the next time. I don't know if it will be next week because I'll be going back to... Um, I have a break in the uh, playlist 12 by 12s. So I'll probably do a little, another little project. But this, you know, I discovered the, the black and white images and then this. So that's going to be the next time. Love this. Absolutely love it. That's with a folder I don't have here in front of me, but it's one of my favorite all-time embossing folders. And this was uh, not from here, but this was this was part of that image, and it was one page was banana, and the other page was republic. And then I put that along the edge, and then I wanted to get this for the front the comeback tour this was from a spree company the comeback tour and i got that 100 years off something else but the background was beige i wish it was not beige <laughs> but oh well so that's my favorite and that's how this evolved, and we'll be doing that the next time. And uh, I thank you very much for the response to this playlist, and I hope you take this wherever you want to take it and do whatever you would like to do with it. But thank you for your time, and I'll see you next time, everyone. Bye.